Hey, what's going on my math party people? Welcome back. Anderson here. So we have these two problems here on unit conversion. So I want you to pause the video, try them out, and then when you press play to watch me, you'll learn what you did right, what you did wrong, and what reasoning you used so that you can build that confidence, because that's what it's all about. So try it out, and let's get started. So a scientific experiment lasted for eight days. How many hours is this? So there's the goal of my problem. We want to know how many hours. But, well, we have days. So the issue is, how do I go from days to hours? Okay. So here's my understanding so far. I know that one day, one day is the same as 24 hours. So that essential fact, we need to have that down, right? One day is 24 hours. So how many is eight of those? Well, we know that to go from one day to hours, we multiply that by 24. We multiply that by 24 to get 24 hours. So we're gonna do the same thing. Every day is 24 hours. So we'll multiply 24 for every one of those days. So since there's eight of them, eight times 24, what does that give us? You can use mental math or you can use your paper here. But I, <laughs> if you guys know me, you know that mental math is that way to go. So with mental math, here's how it would work. We would have 20, four times eight, and that would be the same as 20 times eight plus four times eight. I just split up the 24 into the tens in units, broke it, you know, broke it apart, and then brought it back together. So 20 times eight, that's gonna give me 160. That's pretty easy, because two times eight is 16, so put the extra zero for the 20. And four times eight, that's pretty easy too. That's 32. And remember, this over here is going on in my head. 20 times eight, and four times eight. And then you bring it back together in your head to get 192. And there we go. 192 hours is eight days. That's the answer there. So let's move on to number two. A ladder is 98 inches tall. How tall is it in feet and inches. Hmm, interesting problem here, right? Because we have a total of 98 inches and we wanna get that down to feet and inches. So again, it's about conversions. So we know that one foot, that is 12 inches, all right? And so I want you to take a look here because we're not going forward like we did here for day to hours. We're going from inches to feet. Here we're going big to small. Now we're going small to big. So this is different, very different, because to go from inches to feet, it looks like we're dividing by 12. Every group of 12 inches is one foot. So you're gonna take that 98, divide that by 12 to get the number of feet. And your remainder, the remainder will essentially show you that number of inches that you're left over with. So with that said, let's get to it. You can long divide 12 into 98, or with mental math, you should be able to see that uh, 12 goes into 98 quite a few times. And with mental math, you can break it down like this. I know that 12 can go into 60. I know that 12 can go into 60. And 98, that would be 38 extra. So if I'm dividing by 12, and again, this is happening in my head. If you know long division, go ahead and do long division. But I'm showing you mental math so you can be quicker every time. So 60 divided by 12, that's five. I knew that because I know my times tables. 12 times five is 60. Now 38, 38, well, you can divide that by 12, but it's not gonna be perfect. I know that 36 would be fine. So if I had 36 and two, I know that 36 divided by 12 is gonna be three. And then we have the extra two inches. So these two over here, that gave me feet, that gave me feet, and we have two inches left over. So five plus three is eight feet, and then we have a remainder of two inches. So if that mental math technique was, again, you know, uh, some shocking, you know, there's some shock value to it, that's okay, completely okay. Because anything useful that's brand new to you, it's gonna be disorienting. You just wanna make sure you take the time to practice it a little more and apply it to the problems that you do. I'm telling you. That small investment is worth a passing score on the ASVAB. So with that said, 
Everybody, I hope that these problems help out. Look out for that next one where we're going to go over even more problems. That way you can continue acing that ASVAB. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'm Anderson. You can always email me, Anderson at DuranLearning.com. All right. So Anderson at DuranLearning.com. Reach out there and you're good to go. You guys have an amazing day. We'll see you next time.